mine is like a town meeting. Lots of people, lots of different opinions. And sometimes the town meeting is well run, people are reasonable, courteous. But a lot of times it also just goes out of control. People start shouting, and a kind of mob psychology takes over. And if you're standing outside the mob, it's easy enough to see that people are crazy. You get enough people in a mob to believe, say, that somebody's a witch and they can set her on fire. And then after it's all over, they say, gee, how did that happen? And it's the same in the mind. Every now and then some crazy idea comes and takes hold of everybody, every voice in the mind. And the only way you can not get swept up in this craziness is to step outside. And unfortunately, there's no little area outside of your brain when you're, where you can step. You're in there with them, but you've got to learn how to separate yourself from these voices. This is really important in the meditation. There are states of mind that the Buddha calls hindrances, which can come sweeping through the mind. And the problem with each one of them, sensual desire, ill will, torpor and lethargy, restlessness and anxiety and uncertainty, the problem with each one is that it really blinds you. You start seeing things in line with that hindrance, and you lose sight of what's really for your own true benefit. In other words, when sensual desire comes along, the object really is attractive. And you can't stand not pursuing that object. When ill will comes along, the person that you really don't like is really a bad person. That's how it all seems. When sleepiness comes, so you can you can talk yourself into falling asleep, taking an extra nap, waking up and turning over and falling back to sleep again, because the body really seems to need sleep at a time like that. And so on down the list. And yet after it's passed, you look back at it and you realize you didn't really have to follow through with that. You could have been done perfectly well not following the object of your lust or desire. You could have done perfectly well without doing anything nasty to the person that you don't like. It's just that at the time, your perceptions were skewed. The Buddha compares each of the hindrances to a different kind of water, water that has dye in it, that sensual desire. You look at things, say there's red dye in the water, well the things in the object, things in the water look red. You take them out, they're not red, they're just the water. The old wheel is like boiling water, and you try to look down into boiling water and you can't see anything clearly because of the motion of the water. Torpor and lethargy is like water that's filled with algae. Narcissism and anxiety is water that's got wind ruffling it up. Uncertainty is like water in the dark. And even though the water may be clear by its nature, it's not in a situation where you can see anything in the water. When the mind is seized by these hindrances, you really can't see things for what they are. So you've got to learn how to recognize them when they come, and realize that you don't want to get involved with them. If you can catch them in time, when they start the very early stages, you can realize, okay, this is a hindrance. This is nothing very good to get involved with. You can separate yourself out. 
This is one of the basic skills that you need, not only as a meditator, just to survive in your life. I visited a John Sweat that last time. He'd had some brain damage in his automobile accident, but he had the mindfulness to know when his brain was not functioning right. He said the brain was giving him all sorts of weird perceptions. But because he'd been a good meditator, he'd developed the mindfulness not to fall in with him. This is very different from my father, who had Parkinson's dementia as he was getting old. And he'd see animals in the house and people committing suicide out in the yard and all kinds of stuff. And you'd try to talk him into realizing that it was an illusion, and he wouldn't believe you. There was a black dog in the living room, there was a black dog in the living room, no matter what evidence you would have that there wasn't. This is the difference between a mind that's trained and a mind that's not trained. So if you can nip these things in the butt, it's important that you do it. Otherwise, a kind of mob psychology takes over in the mind. And it's not just voices screaming in your head, but also changes in your body. The blood might start racing faster, the heart's racing faster. You have a feeling, different feelings in different parts of the body. When you're angry, there's this weird feeling in your gut. And because of the physical symptoms, you see, gee, this must be what I really feel. But that's not the case. It's just your hormones running. The hormone gets into your blood, and it keeps circulating around in the body, even after the particular mind state is gone. And we've gotten used to the idea, say, that if you're angry and there's the feeling of anger in the body, then you must still be angry. And so the thought of anger has a chance to come back in and take over again. So one thing to remind yourself is, okay, it's just the hormones in the blood. And the actual thought of anger comes and goes. The same with all the other hindrances. Just because there's a physical symptom doesn't mean that it's especially real. It's like people presenting arguments. I'm going through a critique of the Monk's Rules book right now, and the person writing the critique has some strong arguments and has some weak arguments. And it's interesting that the strong arguments are the ones where he simply points out, well, this is a mistranslation. That's it. And when the arguments are weak, that's when he starts getting belligerent, throws in a lot of emotion. This is the way the mind works. When a particular defilement knows that it has a weak case, it shouts and it screams and it uses every trick it can think of in order to push you into following it. And so when things come on that strong, learn to recognize them just as the, the hype of the defilements. In the same way that you have to learn how to read through the hype in an advertisement. And if all else fails, just hunker down. Because sometimes these things come really strong and they've got to just sort of run their course. You simply make up your mind, you're not going to fall, fall in line with them, you're not going to act under their power. And you just hunker down with the breath. Don't get involved in the conversations. Don't get pulled into a shouting match. It's like that storm I mentioned this evening, the one we had several years back, 100 mile per hour winds. There's no, nothing you can do, just stay in your hut and wait for it to pass. 
then you could come out and survey the damage and figure out what needed to be done. But while the wind was blowing, it was hard to figure anything out at all. It's when these strong emotions come blowing through the mind. Just try to keep yourself separate. Hunker down. And John Lee has a good way of thinking about these things. He says, you don't know who's actually speaking in your mind. You've got all those little germs in your blood. Maybe these thoughts coming into your mind are the little germs going through your brain. Or you may have seen cases of people who are actually possessed by a spirit. Maybe this is a spirit coming and trying to possess your mind. In other words, learn not how not to identify with these crazy voices. Ask yourself if you actually followed through with that particular voice, where would it take you? And if you start getting crazy answers to that question, you realize, okay, it's impossible to have a conversation here, just hunker down. Wait for the storm to pass. Wait for the craziness of the mob psychology to run its course. But the important thing is that you not become part of the mob. If you learn how to get this kind of perspective on your thoughts, you can save yourself a lot of grief. As that bumper sticker says, don't believe everything you think. Don't identify with everything that's coming through your mind. And don't fall for the hype. that the defilements bring in to push their case. When these things get really strong, just hold on to the breath for dear life. When the storm is past, you'll be glad that you didn't allow yourself to get swept away. <laughs>